All right, so again, you'll recognize a lot of this, at least at the beginning here, to stuff that we did first semester. In fact, anybody remember what this is called, this circle thing down here? Nobody remembers what that's called? The unit circle. The unit circle, yes. Okay, now, one thing you probably, hopefully do remember is, how do I convert from degrees to radians? Everybody remember? Like, what do I have to do to all these numbers to convert it from degrees to radians? You have to do it on the exam. Pi over 180. So literally, I'm going to write times by pi over 180. Okay? And so, uh, for those of you who haven't had me before, so, and let's put this in parentheses, and reduce. Okay? For those of you who haven't done me, had me before, what I do is I literally just put pi next to it and 180 under it, and then reduce it. What number do we know for sure goes into 150 and 180? 10, right, because they both end in 0. So let me just cancel the zeros out. And what number goes into 15 and 18? 3 goes into the top and bottom 5 and 6 times. And that's it. That's all you got to do. I want you to do the other 4. Take you probably a minute, maybe 2 tops. So just times it by 12, 8, pi over 180 and reduce it. Start writing the answers in here. Because I divided the top bottom by five, okay. and then I divided by nine again. Uh, I was just trying to think. I know at least five goes into a less or something, and I used a calculator before. That's how. completely done, go ahead and just write them in. Okay. I want to make sure you have these values for what we're going to be doing next. Because we're going to convert that entire unit circle, which we've done in degrees, all the way around. And we've, done a, we've written the points. We're going to have this cover everything. There's three things we need to do here. We need to write the points, we need to do the degrees, and we need to do the radians. And I'm going to help you through a little bit of this, and then I'm going to have you go for like the next five, ten minutes to fill out the rest. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is degrees. So I'm coming down to this unit circle. What is this in terms of degrees? Anybody remember? Zero. It's where we started, right? That's zero degrees. Let's do some easy ones. How about up here? Ninety. How about keep this inside the circle, by the way. It's going to be helpful if you do for room. Right here? One eighty. And here? 
270, and then all full circle again was 360. Okay, that's the easy part. Okay. Can you also tell me the points? Like, what's the point value here? Do you remember? One zero. Remember, we had to do a lot of these. This is zero, we just one. zero one. Yep. Keep going. Negative one zero. Negative one zero. And zero negative one. Okay. Those were the easy ones. Those were, that was chapter trick five that we did pretty well on getting through. And then you had to do cosine is the x value, sine is the y value, tangent was y over x, right? Now, for the other ones, we have labeled these, but I think a lot of people put them besides. But if you remember, they were all from the 30, 60, 90 triangles or the 45, 45, 90 triangles. So do you remember what's in the middle here? 45, 45 right? Which makes sense because it's halfway between 0 and 90, right? So let's put 45, oh shoot, I meant to do that on the inside, sorry. 45 degrees right there. Okay. Um, so this middle one would just be 90 plus 45, which is 135. This would be 180 plus 45 to give me 225. And this would be 270 plus 45 to give me 315. Right. Remember what the first one was here? 30. And the second one, after 45? 60, right? Because they're all 30, 60, 90s, right? So for the next couple of them, and I want you to do this just quick a second, is from 90, add 30, add 60 to get those two. From 180, add 30, add 60 to get one of those two. From 270, add 30, add 60. And you should be able to get all the values. Just go ahead and do that real quick a second. Probably take you a minute or two tops. If you don't know what I'm doing, stop me as I'm walking around here. All right, I'm guessing we're doing pretty good by now. Let me just quickly fill in the rest and check your answers in mind. 120. 150, 150, 210, 40, 3 bills, 3.30. All right, so uh, make sure if you don't have those correct, erase it, make sure it's right, because I want you to reference this going forward. Um, the next, like, eight sections of this chapter will be based kind of around this loosely, okay? Now, I want to get the points up there, too. Anybody remember the points? Remember what point went here? In the middle? I'll be really impressed if anybody remembers. Wait, what, Jess? What's the point at 45 degrees? The x value and the y value at 45 degrees. I'll give you a hint. They're the same. No. Because, because look at what that would mean. That would mean that you go over one and up one, and your point would be right here. But it's actually right here. Right here, excuse me. Okay, let's just write it. I'm okay with that. This is the square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 over 2. If you use those 45, 45, 90 triangles, and I said find the sine of it, you would get 1 over the square root of 2. 
then you do the square root of 2 over square root of 2 thing to get to what I got. And it would be the same thing with sine. And the cool thing is, and I've said, I've said this last semester too, is that all the 45s are that, except for they're just negatives or positives, depending on where it is. So like this point right here is square root of 2 over 2 positive because it went right, and then negative square root of 2 over 2 because I went down. Does that make sense? Right? It's the same thing at all the 45. So let's go to the middle one here. This is negative square root of 2 over 2, positive square root of 2 over 2 because I went up. And then in the third quadrant, all points are what? Down here. All points are what here? Negative, negative, negative right? Okay. So at that 45, the middle one, is negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. Any of you plan to take pre-calculus next year? pre -calculus? No? Okay. If you do, this is the one thing from algebra 2 you want to make sure you keep. Okay. Now, at the 30s and 60s, it's either one value or the other value. Anybody remember either one of them? Let's over here to the right. Let's write this down. Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Which, by the way, I do have written right down here as well. What do I know about the square root of 3? Well, it's greater than 1, right? I know what 1 half is. What's 1 half is the decimal? 0.5, right? So, square root of 3 over 2 is actually greater than that. It's actually 0 0.707. But what's, what really matters here is that because that's bigger than that, then every other point on this graph is either this or this. Every other point, okay? So, is, this is what I said first semester, this point, is this point further over or further up? Further over. Can everybody see that this point right here is further over than it is up? Right, like if I were to measure it, I mean, I'd go from here to here, and I'd get like 15, and then from the line to there, I'd get like 9. So it's further over than it is up. So the over value, is the over value x or y? X is over, right? So that means that the x value has to be bigger than the y value. And that's it. That's that point. Okay? And for 60, similarly, is 60 degrees further over or further up? It's further up. So the up value, the y value, has to be the bigger of the two values. Again, I'm telling you, everything else on here is either 1 half or square root of 3 over 2. And that's the point for that. Okay. Let me just take a random one. I'm going to do 210 degrees. Is 210 degrees further over or further down? <coughs> further over. So the x value has to be square root of 3 over 2 has to be the bigger of the two. And then I just got to remember that they're both negative. Because I'm in that third quadrant. I'm at 210. I'm not at 120. I'm at 210. Okay. So from there, I'm hoping you can decipher where the rest of these points are. Go and fill on the outside of the circle. Fill in the rest of the points. Okay. If you need one more, I'll give you 120. 120 is further up than it is over. So it's negative a half because I went left, and then square root of 3 over 2 because I went up more than I went over. Okay. I want you guys to fill in the rest of these points. Just take a couple minutes to do that. Remember, everything is either square root of 3 over 2 or 1 half, and then positive negative depending on where it is. <laughs>
quand les garçons ont pris les années. So I'm going to hold up there. Just going to fill them in real quick here. Make sure that if you do not have this, that you are copying mine in correctly. Give you a second, make sure you just double check yours in mine. Copy it in if you need to. I want to make sure you got it right. So please make sure, even if it's just a negative sign, to throw that in there. If you got it wrong, even if you didn't do it, make sure you do it now when you want this table. Yes, sir. Is that three over three over It's the square root of two. It's the same all the way around. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at a couple of things. Okay? And Dante is kind of already noticing this. They're kind of reflections of each other, right? Yeah. Like this point reflects over there, so they should have the exact same x and y values, just negative positives, right? Same way the other way. This reflects over here. So they should have the same x and the same y, just negative positives, right? Even all the way across, look at this one. It's the same as that one, all the way across. Just different negative positives, okay? So that's kind of a way to kind of do it. Now, I am not going to make you memorize every single thing on here, but you're going to have to know kind of where what goes where, okay? Now, let's do radians. Now, this is going to take a few minutes, but we've already done a few of these. Up here, I already wrote all these in radians. Let's go put those on the chart, okay? 240 degrees is 4 pi over 3. I'm going backwards here from number 5 on. So at 240 right here, I'm going to write 4 pi. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this in a different color so you guys can see it better. 4 pi over three. We can't say it at all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that would help. Let me zoom, zoom this up just a little bit. So again, from the very top here, I got 240 degrees is 4 pi over 3, so I'm just labeling 4 pi over 3 here. I know 180 degrees is pi, so I'm going to label this as pi. I know that negative 135 degrees, well, I'm not going to worry about that. I will get you to that in just a little bit. But let me get to 45 degrees is pi over 4, so right here, I'm going to get pi over 4. <laughs> I know that at 150 degrees, it's 5 pi over 6. So I'm going to 5 pi over 6 here. Now I'm going to talk about real quickly about what negative 135 degrees means. Remember how, look at our whole circle, matter of fact. Counterclockwise is positive, right? So clockwise is negative. Everybody okay with that? The cool thing about negatives and positives is, if I'm trying to find negative 135, it's the exact opposite as 135. 
So if 135 brings me here, negative 135 brings me here. Does that make sense? Like if I said 90 degrees, it'd be here. Negative 90 degrees would be here. Right? And so on. So negative 135 degrees right here is negative 3 pi over 4. I'm not going to have you write a negative there, though. Don't do that. Okay? I want to have all of these be positive. But let's take a look at what the rest of it is. I mean, I could just plug them in and do pi over 180, right? If I multiply 30 pi over 180, what does that reduce to? Anybody? 30 pi over 180. So what does 30 over 180 reduce to? One sixth, right? That's where you're going with that, right? Is one sixth. So, so look, this is just pi over six. How about 60? 60 over 180, which becomes 6 over 18, which reduces to 1 third. So this is pi over 3. How about 90 over 180? 1 half. 1 half. So this is pi over 2. Now those are the kind of easier ones. The rest are going to have some numbers up top. Matter of fact, let's at least get the easy ones out of the way. This one at the bottom here is 3 pi over 2, right, 27 over 18 would reduce 9 to 9. And this is both 0 and 2 pi, because 360 divided by 180 is 2, even, okay? But look at what ha is happening here. Pi over 6, this is why I wrote this here to helpful hints. The pi over 6 is closer to the x-axis. So look at that's pi over 6, this is the x-axis. That's a pi over 6, guess what this one's going to be? pi over 6, and this one, a pi over 6. We'll get to that. Pi over 3 is always closest to the y-axis. Look, there's pi over 3 close to the y-axis. There's a pi over 3 close to the y-axis. So this is going to have something with a pi over 3 in it. Okay? Pi over 4 is always in the middle. So I did pi over 4 there. Now here's the thing. This is 1 pi over 4, right? What is this over 4? 2 pi over 4, right? 2 fourths reduces a. So really this was 1 two, three, four, four pi over four, well yeah, that's pi, right? Five, six, six over four reduces this, seven, eight, eight over four reduces to this. Let's just go fill it in. I'm not gonna make you do a whole lot of this. I think it actually is kind of a waste of time. Let's just keep going. With, the, with this, again, one pi over four, two pi over four, this is three pi over four. Be careful, we're in the middle. Then this is four pi over four, then at 225, it's five pi over four. Now again, you know how to do this. Just take it as pi over 180. I'm not going to make you do that in every single point. That's why I'm doing it right now. So what's this next one going to be? 7 pi over 4, right? I went 5, 6 would be in the middle, 7 would be on the end. So this is 7 pi over 4 in the middle there at 315. Okay? All right, we're kind of on fire here. Keep in mind again, if I do pi over 3, this is pi over 3. What do you think that is? Hold on a second, what is this? Right, I go 1, 2, 3, because 3 pi over 3 is pi, right? So this one is just 2 pi over 3. So if this is 2 pi over 3, and this is 3 pi over 3, then what's this one? 4 pi over 3? Yeah, I'm not trying to confuse you. Well, I'm sorry, it was this one, I'm sorry. Dang it, I guess I'm confusing you. This, by the way, is 7 pi over 6. Let's just write that in there. This is 7 pi over 6, so my bad. Here's 4 pi over 3. Remember, the pi over 3 is closer to the y-axis. See your spot? So this is 4 pi over 3. This is 5 pi over 3. And at the very end, it's 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. All right, so we're only missing one more value. Can anybody tell me what it is? Matter of fact, if you can get it right, I'll give it by your candy bar for tomorrow. No, without simplifying it in the calculator and multiplying through. All right, ready? What's this? 1 pi over 6, right? That's 2 pi over 6, because it reduces there. 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10, 11 pi over 6. That's what it is. Right, which 11 over 6 makes sense because it's just before I would get to 12 over 6, which is, gives me 2. <clears throat> All right, soak it in. 
Make sure you have all of that on there. That is significant to have that because the rest is so easy now. Okay? I'm going to give you that to be able to do the quiz and stuff like that that you're going to have to do. But you have to know how to use it, which is what we're going to do down below. Okay, you have it all on there, so I don't need to have that part on the screen. But if I go down here and it says, now let's apply this. Find the exact values for cosine and sine for each of the special angles below. Cosine of 7 pi over 6. Can somebody look right at this and tell me what the cosine of 7 pi over 6 is? Here's what I'm looking for. One half, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So. Why is it negative square root of 3 over 2? Because the cosine of 7 pi over 6 is just the x value of 7 pi over 6. Right? We've done this with the 90s. We haven't done it with the other points. But cosine is still just the x values, and sine is still just the y values. Okay? So the cosine of 7 pi over 6 just means x value at 7 pi over 6 which is negative square root of 3 over 2. And that's it. So what's the sign of 5 pi over 4? Look, on your, look for it on your chart. What's the sign of 5 pi over 4? Negative 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2. Boom, that's it. Negative square root of 2 over 2. Why? Because it is the y value at 5 pi over 4. That's pretty easy, isn't it? Let's do a negative one, because they're a little harder. I'm going to do two negative ones here. Cosine of negative pi over 3. Anybody think they know where it is? Know what the answer is, excuse me? Try me. What do you think? Anybody? Why is it one half ball? You're right. Right? Because look, if pi over 3, watch, watch, watch. Pi over 3 is there, right? So negative pi over 3 it's there. And the cosine value is just one half. Right? So, one half. How about sine of negative 3 pi over 2? Now, don't make this harder than it is. Here's 3 pi over 2, right? So, that's 3 pi over 2. So, negative 3 pi over 2 is the exact distance the other way. So, I went 3 quarters of a circle. So, from here for negative, I got to go 3 quarters of a circle. And the sine value is? What's the sign value at this point? Just positive? Just one? Right? No, I'm, here's, let me try this again. It's 3 pi over 2, right? So 3 pi over 2 is right here. So that means from here I would go 3 quarters of the circle. So negative, I just go the other way, 3 quarters of the circle. To right here. And identify the sign value, which is the y, which is 1. Okay? So that's it. That's that. I want you guys to try 5, 6, 7, 8. You guys try 5, 6, 7, 8. Help each other out. Yeah. And here's another way to remember. Hey, if you've forgotten how to remember this, it's alphabetical. Cosine and sine, C comes before S, X and Y, X comes before Y. So cosine is with the X, sine is with the Y. To determine what's what.
Let me start writing some of the answers up here. Go ahead and keep working as you go. Hey, check yours with mine. Make sure you're feeling good about it. Any questions? Pretty easy. Once you can just look at it and you remember cosine is x and sine is y, there's nothing to it. Let's go to the next page. Now it gets super easy for the rest of our class. Like, extremely easy. Now, the top of this page is, again, just kind of a proof, like I've done in the past couple of sections, of how I get to the arc length formula. Arc length. What does an arc look like? What's an arc look like? I think of an arc is just. Right? Just kind of like a rainbow almost, right? So what we're doing is we're measuring this arc, this rainbow looking piece of the circle. Okay? And how to do that is to take the portion of the circle and times it by 2 pi r. Anybody remember what 2 pi r is? Okay, don't worry about it. I don't want to confuse you. So the portion of the circle can be found by just taking the degrees divided by 360, multiplied by 2 pi r. Well, 360 in radians is 2 pi, and 2 pi over 2 pi cancel each other out. It's just r times theta. Theta is just the degrees or the radians given. Watch how easy this is. r is the radius. Look at the picture. r is the radius. And theta is the amount in radians that you went. So to find the arc length of this picture, it's literally just taking the radians, which is 6, and times it by the length, which is 7 pi over 6. That's it. And I'll show you what that is, because it sounds like really simple, and it is, as long as you remember you don't have to plug this in your calculator, because I don't, or, or you can't, actually. Let's write it down here. So arc <coughs> equals r times theta, that little symbol O with like a circle in the sideways, 